Today I'm taking everyone along with me into a place in our home that you have never seen before. We found some pretty cool hidden treasures during demo and I'll also share with you what we put into the walls before we close them up. I'm gonna share an awesome secret of how to save time and mess when you're spackling. And be sure to stay tuned to the end of this video as I'll be sharing with you the mood board and the overall design concept for this small space. It is gonna be a pretty big upgrade, so I'm glad you're joining me today so we can go through the process together. First, let me give you a tour of our upstairs bathroom and then we'll get started on the demo. All right, so I'm gonna be giving you a tour and before look at this bathroom, but I also wanna kind of give you some commentary as we look around at the history of our home. So it was actually built in 1908. It is an old, old home at this point. It is 116 years old. We believe this upstairs was finished back in the 1950s and probably got an update in the 1980s. So this thing is definitely needing updated again, obviously. The one thing about this bathtub that I absolutely love is this claw foot tub though. This is one of those back and forth questions. Should we get rid of it? Should we get a new one? Should we keep it and refinish it? And we've decided we are going to refinish it and I'll do a tutorial on how we're gonna do that. So stay tuned, subscribe so you don't miss it. But let me know down in the comments below, what would you do? Would you keep the claw foot tub or would you get a new one? So looking around the rest of this bathroom, it's basically all gonna get replaced. New wall, new ceiling, new toilet, new vanity, new mirror, new lighting, new hardware, new flooring. And I am so excited about this process. This is just kind of a general overview before. And then hubby took it upon himself to do all the demo. Grateful for him. And this is what it looks like on day one, once everything pretty much got removed, all the fixtures, he unhooked everything, took the bathtub and moved it out of the way so he could take down some of the walls that are gonna be tile eventually, all the trim and took out all the vanity and the toilet and all that kind of stuff. So we could finally start working on this space. Two cool things he found during this process was laminate under the laminate, kind of a pergo style laminate, and also this pretty wallpaper behind the drywall, which we believe is probably from the 1950s. You can see here, it even has a little bit of a gold metallic sparkle to it. Very cool. We always keep cool things we find in the house, keep it in a cool place. So later we can pass on those items to the next homeowners. All right, day two of the bathroom renovation and honey has something to say apparently um but i think we're pretty much done demoing in here obviously um so we've got everything out that needs to go and now it's just about putting it back together so today's big plan is to work on this so we're actually going to remove this door and build it out so right now there is literally no back to it like you can go all the way <laughs> through behind that wall is my daughter's bedroom so this is actually her closet in here too so we're gonna build that off and make a wall and add some more shelves and what i have are these cute baskets from target and i already had a couple of them so i want to see how they're gonna fit see if i need to get a couple more um and that's the cool part about renovation is it's all custom. So I'm able to kind of put this in here, see how deep we want these shelves before it gets made. So it's kind of like building a shelf around a basket instead of the other way around. So that's today's plan. Hopefully we can get that done. And I also said I would share what we hid in the walls before we close them up. And this little message is what Brian wrote and took a picture of it, sent it to me on my phone. I thought it was really, really sweet. We do this on all our demo projects though. We always leave a little message or date or initials in there. We find some really cool messages as we are demoing this old house. So we just thought it would be fun to put our own stamp on these projects. And then somebody years down the road will find our messages too. So Brian finished up that shelf on the left side and got the concrete board up. And then day three was all about the ceiling. We had high hopes for this day to get a lot done, but unfortunately my mom called as we were actually holding this bead board up to the ceiling for that install and said she needed us to come and take her to the urgent care because she had fallen. So we just hurried up. We were able to get the first piece installed before we needed to take off and take care of her. Luckily she is okay. She 
she did stay a day in the hospital, but she is doing fine now. Um, the next day after that was Easter, so we took that day off, and then Monday I got back to it. Day four was all about shiplap, and I absolutely love installing shiplap. We've done this in so many different places in our house, but we've never installed it vertically like I'm doing here. It's kind of a modern twist on it, but it's still a great way to kind of bring the whole house together so it all has a cohesive look. Same thing with the ceiling. Our basement and the downstairs has beadboard on the ceiling, so we repeated that up here in this bathroom, and we're also trying to stay with the integrity of this house, and that is obviously a repeated um, element in this home. Yes. Let's see if I can do that. That's what we make trim for. I can't tell you how satisfying it was to walk into this bright, more clean looking space. All the walls now have new coverings on them as well as the ceiling. And we have this nice new um, clean look to it. Whereas before it just kind of looked dingy and junky and now it just looks more refreshed. So the ceiling is going to stay white. You can see we have a new light up there. That's also a fan. So there's going to be two lights in there now. You can see our new built in shelf, which is going to add a ton of storage that we're now going to be able to access very easily. And then I don't know if you remember back to the before, but here is a look at it. In the middle of this wall, there was an outlet. <laughs> it just didn't make sense at all. It was kind of far away from the vanity. So Brian took that outlet out altogether and kind of moved it and did some magic. So now we have an outlet and two switches next to the door. So now that we have all the shiplap up and the ceiling up, we have a ton of nail holes that need to be filled. I want to share with you a tip and a trick that is going to save you a ton of time and save you from having a big mess. So what is the secret? Baby wipes. I've done this for a long time. It works great. All you have to do is take your spackling. I just use my finger, fill the nail holes, get it all down into each one of those nail holes. And then before it dries, grab out your baby wipe and wipe off any of the excess. Now we just saved ourselves having to go back and sand it, which saves on the mess. And as soon as that pink coloring has turned to white, we can go ahead and paint. But we also saved ourselves dry time since we took a lot of that excess off. Shouldn't take any time at all to dry so we can get to painting. We are going to be painting the shiplap, but I am keeping the ceiling white. We wanted to keep this nice, bright and airy as it is a pretty small space in here. And with those vaulted ceilings, it kind of gets a little bit more closed in feeling, but the white will help with that. Yeah, so I thought I was going to go away with having to do the nail holes around the edge and having to spackle those because I thought the trim was going to cover them up, but definitely it was not going to happen. So I had to go back in and fill some more nail holes with some spackling before I could come in with my roller and paint the ceiling. So I had to do the ceiling first to kind of save myself some time having to tape stuff off because now we're going to come in and we're going to work on the trim. I'm going to take you guys with me to the hardware store and show you the product that I use for trim and spackling. And you just hit the hardware store. We did have to get some one buys to create a door trim for the entrance to the bathroom. So that's what this is for. But I wanted to show you this is like a PVC lattice 
that is super easy to cut and install and paint and these come in eight in or eight foot strips and they're about an inch and a half wide and this is what I've used for all the shiplap that I've done in our house and I continue to do it because it works out really really well so we needed 10 sticks of this and we'll eventually have to come back in and get more for the baseboard trim but we're going to start with just the top trim today first all right, so not too bad of a trip this time. Just a small cart full. We also grabbed some caulk as we needed some for all this trim. Made sure it had some silicone in it and it was rated for bathroom use. So here's today's trip, but you let me know down in the comments below how many trips to the hardware store do you think we have made for this project so far? I'll give you a hint. It's more than three. All right, so I just want to share these awesome pair of scissors that make trim so much easier they're called miter shears and they are heavy duty so they're going to cut through our trim material and you can cut straight but these are awesome too because you can set different angles on them and you can do angle cuts so i've measured this wall 52 and a quarter inches i'm just going to take my miter shears measure and cut. So now that the trim is all up, we can add the caulk, which is really what finishes off this whole look. There's some odd kind of gaps and things that can happen. So this just makes everything look seamless, pulls the look all together, dries pretty quickly, and then we can get to painting. And so here's a quick look around the room at that trim. And you can see we had to add a little spackling up there on the ceiling. No big deal. It'll dry. We'll paint it. You'll never know there was a gap there. Just drawing your attention here to the nice trim that finished out that custom cubby. And finally, it's time to paint. I will link this color down in the description box below for you. I wanted something that wasn't too dark, but still had a warm tone to it. And I think this one is going to fit the bill. Inside that cubby shelf system, I wanted to keep the shelves the nice natural wood color, but we are gonna paint out the box, so the sides and the back, which will also help give this a nice built-in seamless look. And then as far as painting the shiplap goes, it does take a little bit more time than just painting a regular wall. You have to come in with a paintbrush and get down into those cracks and crevices and then come back in with your roller and smooth it all out. So I like to do just a few boards at a time. That way I don't get as many brush strokes and I just kind of smooth it all out with the roller. And here's a quick look around the room after our first coat of paint and it is still kind of wet. So you'll see it's shiny here in a few different spots. Um, but that will dry and we did get a satin finish so it'll tone down a lot and we will also have to come back in and do at least a second coat if not a third coat of paint to get into all those cracks and crevices and make sure we get a nice finish on these walls. I also mentioned that I would share with you the overall design idea for this space so let me walk you through each one of those elements. All right, so I thought it'd be fun to do sort of an in real time design board right in front of you so you can see some of the elements that are going to be coming together to create this bathroom design. So let's start with the tile first. It is just a porcelain tile with a marble look. It's a hexagon shape and it's kind of large, even though we have a smaller bathroom. I think this is going to help make it look a little bit bigger in there. So that's the flooring. This obviously is going to be the hardware for the vanity. So a brushed antique gold color. Another tile element that we're going to be adding to the bathroom are these subway tiles. This is going to go where the clawfoot tub and the shower is. So this actually comes in three different shades but all in the same box so it kind of gives you the ability to customize how you want the pattern and all that to look like so loving the neutral the neutral look of this we're also going to have a marble countertop so the background here is my kitchen counter which is quartz but it's still kind of got the same sort of look that the vanity is going to have where it has the white background with a little bit of gray in it we're also going to be adding a Turkish style shower curtain, very neutral and tan. 
and as well as some shiplap in there. So this obviously is white shiplap, but we're gonna be installing it a little bit differently. We're gonna be installing it vertically like this, and we're also gonna be painting it. So it's not gonna stay white. We're actually gonna be using this color. It's called Logia. This is from Lowe's, and we did get the Sherwin-Williams um, brand paint, which was recommended for bathrooms. So that is going to be three of the wall colors in there. And then the other wall color is going to actually be the tile. We're gonna be throwing in some more of the antique um, brass in there and some wood elements as well as some woven baskets to bring in more of the natural elements and give it some more texture and life. So this is kind of just a look at how some of this is gonna come together. And then one other element that I think is going to really add even more interest are these black knobs. And we will also be adding some black metal in there, here and there as well, just to give it a little bit more variety. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna mix some of the black with the brass. If you guessed eight trips to the hardware store, then you guessed right. And I'm sure we still have many more trips to make. If you made it to the end of this video, hit that thumbs up button and also subscribe if you haven't yet so you can come back and see the rest of our bathroom renovation. I'll have a playlist popping up on your screen if you want to see the rest of our 100 year old home renovation that we've completed so far. That'd be a great one to click over and watch next. Thanks so much for watching today and I'll see you in the next one. Have a creative day.